Hi, my name is Simon Chesterman. One of the things that's always fascinated me about ASEAN is its aspirations to move from being a periodic meeting of ministers to a real legal community. Uh, and so I was delighted to get involved in this integration through law project. And the topic that I picked was uh, to look at monitoring. Um, as you think about an organisation becoming a rules-based organisation, becoming something that's intended to be taken more seriously, uh, one of the key questions is whether agreements are actually followed through on. Uh, one of the really fascinating things I discovered was that within ASEAN, there was in fact a history of monitoring obligations, uh, but it was very inconsistent. It was inconsistent both across the different areas of obligations, but also in the tools of monitoring that were available. Uh, and in particular, there was a distinction between monitoring of substantive compliance, that is, following through on what you said you were going to do in practice, uh, and implementation, formal implementation, in the sense that you had formally passed a law or something, but less relevant to whether that law was actually being complied with. So what I did in the book, uh, and what I hope you'll find interesting, is look at this evolution of monitoring. Uh, because as ASEAN seeks to become a community, uh, that's going to be one of the key questions, whether its obligations are followed through on. Uh, there are still barriers. Two barriers in particular remain. Uh, the first is that if you're serious about monitoring, the monitors need resources. Uh, and so the ASEAN Secretariat needs to play more of a role in ensuring that obligations are followed through on and that the information about the follow through is shared with the members. Uh, the second barrier really is the key, which is the historic unwillingness, or at least wariness, of member states to actually take on binding obligations. Uh, but I think there is evidence in the record, in particular in the economic community, but also to some extent in the political security and socio-cultural communities, uh, that ASEAN is becoming more willing to see its obligations monitored, and it's possible that we might see, as the community is formed, that community will actually lead to compliance. So please, buy the book, let me know what you think.